my soccer universe. Spring is here, although my spirits are not as high thanks to yesterday's results, which we'll get to uh, in a little bit. Um, I will actually run by it group by group and tell you what I saw. I mean, I watched the Austrian Poland game in full and I watched highlights this morning uh, on the other games, so I think I'm well in the picture. Uh, let's start in Group C, first game, North Island, uh, Estonia 2-0. Uh, yes, uh, Estonia, I'm about to write a uh, post about the Estonian shirt. Yesterday I put a post about Cyprus. I know it's a lot of small nations, but I thought it's uh, kind of interesting because they had a lot of interesting shirts. Uh, sorry, by the way, for the sun. It is, maybe this is a little bit better, but now I'm all in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's this time of the year where the sun, when I'm going and coming from work, is still very much um, in low lying. I think, yeah, I think this is still better. Oh, let's, let's take that way. Okay, so, North Island, Estonia 2 0, and then in the same group, which also contains, of course, Germany, the Netherlands got off to a great start against Belarus. Uh, Already in the first minute, Deep Depay, Memphis Depay makes it 1 0 after very poor defending uh, and high pressing. Uh, and the Dutch continue in this way. Wijnaldum in the 21st makes it 2 0. I think that could have been easily um, 3 0 in there. It didn't come until the second half when um, a penalty was given that Depay um, converted for his second goal. Um, he also had the chance for a hat trick, uh, which he didn't take. And then um, something weird happened that Kuman actually brought in a new player, his third one, and that player, um, and I should know the name now, I didn't write that one down, uh, makes a sprint and seemingly pulls his hamstring. And was at least out for the game, probably out for a little bit longer even. Uh, meaning that the Dutch need to finish the game with 10 men. They still managed the fourth goal through Van Dijk, which I actually thought was offside. Which uh, I have to say, I find it a little bit, um, how to say, irritating that we don't have VAR in the qualifiers. Um, I'll come to that. Uh, later um, and only goal line technology in select grounds. I think at least goal line technology. I mean, it's a small thing, but at least that one should be present. And I really think that where possible, you should have bar. I'm sorry. I, mean, I understand if uh, Northern Ireland plays Estonia or, or so on. Okay, maybe this is a little bit too much logistic. Um, effort but other than that um, there is no reason to not have VAR uh, in Rotterdam um, the same thing goes I think for Vienna um, I really find it irritating uh, because we have this technology now yes it is probably expensive but um, we know it is good so use it so that's group C uh, group E there was the one game that I actually had a thought of, um, because it's a neighbor duel and I know it's also interesting. I mean, it was pretty clear that I will watch Austria-Poland, but there were two other games that stood out, which is Belgium-Russia and Slovakia-Hungary to me. I really thought this could be an interesting uh, match uh, from the highlights I could see. It was mostly Slovakia. By the way, can I say wonderful Slovakia home jerseys, which are very similar to the France, uh, current France home jersey, except they have a much more interesting uh, shoulder pattern. So that was really nice to see. Uh, a Hungary all in red, which I found a little bit odd because I think they could at least have played in white pants uh, quite easily. But so be it. Um, Slovakia dominated that game. 
thoroughly and yeah I got a 2-0 win uh, Duda just before the half and Ruznak after the half and from what I saw could have been easily a few more goals so Slovakia off to a great start in their qualification group um, the big favorite of course in the qualification group is Croatia who had a rocky uh, start to say the least against Azerbaijan uh, Azerbaijan actually uh, was the better team at least in the at, at the start of the game and got their deserved lead through Shedaev and only then Croatia uh, woke up and tried to get something going uh, it seemed Modric was a little bit off target most of the time um, but you know they got into the game, they got their chances, and in the end it was Barisic uh, who got the first goal, which was kind of, you know, a little bit poorly defended also uh, from the Azeri uh, team, which was actually coached by Nikola Jurcevic, uh, a Croat. And I'm saying that because Jurcevic was, of course, a great player when he was playing for Salzburg in the 90s when they made it all the way to the European. Uh, European Cup Final, uh, UEFA Cup Final, so uh, that was interesting, I had not heard about him in a long time, so it was cool to see that he's actually a coach now uh, for Azerbaijan. Um, and in the second half, I think the uh, breakthrough for the win came kind of late through Kramaric, who then actually should have added probably a uh, third one. Azerbaijan had a chance to take another goal, but it never really materialized, so there you go. Uh, we have a 2-1 win to Croatia, who now has a home game against Hungary, which I think will also be kind of interesting to see uh, where they, how, how that will go, since Hungary really had a poor showing. And yeah, I'm curious to see whether Hungary can back against Croatia which is not an easy thing to do as you might, as you might do. And then we're already in Group G, Austria-Poland. Um, it was the top two seeded teams and ahead of the game I was kind of pessimistic to be honest, uh, mostly because so many, uh, especially offensive players of Austria, um, had to miss this game due to injury. Uh, so the squad that came out was actually, yeah, I don't want to say a second string squad, but uh, I, th I think it still could play almost their strongest squad, but it's just that the options from the bench were sorely missing, uh, which beat them in, in, in the end a lot. Um, but Austria started really well for 20 minutes, they thoroughly dominated Poland, uh, even had some chances. Uh, they really caught Poland on the back foot. Only after 20, 20 minutes Poland um, got a little bit more control of the game. I guess, sorry for all this sun here. Poland got a little bit more control of the game, uh, but it was still Austria very much on, on defense. But I have to say, if Poland attack, it was super dangerous. And there was, I think, a shot by Oskar uh, a shot that was saved by Lindner. And uh, there, there was another um, shot right after the right after corner kick uh, with a little bit more power behind it. It could have easily been one nil for Poland, which, to be honest, would not have been quite deserved. I really think that Austria played quite well in the first half. They also started the second half, but this time much shorter, with a lot of um, esprit going forward, but nah, they just, from the few chances that they had, and I have to say, as much as I lauded Arnautovic over the past two years for being the best player that Austria had and he was carrying the team uh, as much I have to criticize him now because when he got the chance he took those chances quite poorly and the other star Alaba he was so off target I mean he took almost all the free kicks and uh, corner kicks and they were all way too high I mean he seemed completely off I'm afraid that uh, he's best days are behind him in a way, especially now that at Bayern Munich he's also more injured, uh, more, um, how to say, error prone than others, so I really am not so, uh, not 
not so happy uh, with the two stars. I think there was more danger coming from the other side with Lina from Salzburg and Lazaro from the other one. Anyway, uh, if Poland came, they came super dangerous and you could then see the second half really that the quality of Poland showed through. Um, Piontek came on, um, I think right around the 60th minute, uh, through a really big ovation by the Polish fans, which of course, I mean the stadium was almost was well filled for 40,000 in a 48,000 uh, stadium. Uh, and I, I would say there were at least, I mean officially 5,000 Poles, I think there were at least 10,000 if not more. Uh, because Poland had good support there. And when Pionte came on, you know, my heart is was torn there. Yes, he plays for the other position, but he also plays for Milan, so I want him to do well. Well, he did. He had uh, one chance, and then he made them on the in the 69th minute after a really poorly defended corner kick. Corner kick came in, uh, was cleared by the Austrians, but not far. For far enough, suddenly the Polish player is in the box, absolutely alone, and everyone is moving back. Uh, and uh, the shot. Get find Piontek's head. I mean, I think get somehow deflected or whatever. I don't know. I'm also well, but they go Piontek uh, falls on his head more or less, and he makes it more ill. Uh, as I said, Piontek, you don't need to see him a lot in the game, but if you see him, he makes the goal. And that is exactly what happened. Uh, and at that point, I think it was not even totally undeserved that Poland would get uh, the goal. Austria tried had the chances, uh, should have got the penalty. I have to say there was also a situation right around the 55th uh, of, uh, that where, Pol uh, where Poland could have had a good claim for a penalty too. I think it was not as clear as the one that was like in the 70, uh, shortly after the 70th minute. Uh, when Grilic was in the box and he was pushed and hit on the ankle by, by, by the attacker, the Greek referee surely swallowed his whistle a lot and you know when he when we saw that he came out he there's something with him and austria i mean he doesn't have many games but the few games that he uh, whistled for austrian teams uh they, they all didn't end all that well and so in the end yeah there was a free kick by Arnautovic who just missed by a little bit you know it was more like yeah we have chances but we more or less missed there were not that many shots on goal to be honest and even if the Arnautovic free kick would have gotten a little bit further further in, I think Chesney was right there. Uh, and then in the 88, Janko came on. I mean, a 35-year-old player who was great for Austria uh, not too long, long ago, but is clearly past his prime. And the only reason that he was called in because he's so tall. Well, he is tall. He got a free header uh, in the 88th minute that went uh, that went way past the goal. I mean, with a little bit more direction, this has to be the 1-1. And I'm actually thinking if Austria would have had a different striker, it didn't have all that many in the injuries, it probably should have been, uh, would have been the 1-1, which I think would have been the just result, but so it ends uh, with a 1-0 win for Poland, putting Austria already under pressure. And yeah, the good start was undone by clearly some Things that were just not gelling as well, and it is, as I feared, we are slowly regressing. We had, yes, after Euro at Euro 2016, the Rafta and the Marcel Koller, Austria was playing not so great anymore, but you always had the feeling that there at least was a clear plan and a clear tactical layout there. I'm missing that now, uh, despite the flexibility that the tractor folder is showing. Uh, but yeah, let's see where it will end up as a huge game in Israel where now this almost becomes to me a must win uh, to be honest we have to see how it will go I mean a draw there is probably okay but uh, if you really want to go for um, the top two spots I think it's a must win especially in light of the other results that we had um, Israel playing at home to Slovenia, and Slovenia actually dominated Israel quite some. Uh, Israel was lucky to get the 1-1. Slovenia had many chances. It was actually weird to see that uh, Israel was playing right at home in Slovenia with their blue away jersey, which I confused me at first. But then I thought, yeah, uh, if they 
would have played in their white jerseys, the light blue of Israel would have provided to the coaches, so I guess I get it. Uh, but the equalizer for uh, Israel was well played, but I think Slovenia had much more of that game, so yeah, one one kind of a lucky result and I mean it points to me that Austria really 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 should get a win in Israel on Saturday I'm not so sure about that uh, the other game Macedonia against Latvia 3-1 Macedonia the Northern Macedonia it's now Northern Macedonia had a quick 2-0 um, lead uh, and only in the last few minutes there were more goals I think the Latvian goal came in the 88th through an own goal and then uh, in the stoppage time Northern Macedonia made it 3-1 and they'd actually take the top spot of the group for now, but even it doesn't mean much. Now, last group is Group I, which actually started proceedings with a huge shocker. Kazakhstan against Scotland, and I had this wrong, I'm sorry, I said Kazakhstan San Marino for some reason. Uh, stupid me. Uh, no, Kazakhstan will have played against Scotland and got off to a great start within 10 minutes. Two really well taken goals, making it 2 0 for uh, Kazakhstan and Scotland was non existent. It was probably color wise the nicest matchup because the Kazakhstan all yellow against the dark blue of the Scots I really liked. Uh, but Scotland was atrocious and Kazakhstan added the third one in the second half. Um, looked, that to me is a big shocker. Probably the shocker of the evening. Uh, Cyprus San Marino 5 0. Cyprus got two penalties, and yes, I posted yesterday about the Cyprus shirt. Um, got two penalties to make it 2 0, and then, yeah, goal after goal. Uh, and it's 5 0, it was 4 0 at halftime. I think that Cyprus kind of uh, shut it down a little bit. And the big game, of course, in that group is Belgium Russia, and now with Scotland using, losing to Kazakhstan. Uh, you can only see those two getting the top two spots, to be honest. Uh, Belgium in yellow, not in their beautiful red shirt that I'm wearing here. Belgium in yellow against the red of Russia, which also was a little bit surprising to me, but I honestly like it. Uh, I think it's more of a color my, my edge on that I used to. Uh, got through Tielemans, a nicely played goal. Uh, the the one nil, and then Courtois has a complete blackout. Is has the ball, keeps it too long. Um, is pressed by Juba, who then, uh, and so he plays it wrong to Cherishev, who just needs to run and pull in the empty net. Uh, absolute mistake by Courtois. I'm not sure if uh, he's hit by the Real Madrid disease. Um, Belgium still continued. I mean, uh, Belgium is a much more talented team, although they don't have as many players from the World Cup squad playing, but still it was enough. Uh, they got the 2-1 through a penalty uh, in the 45th minute through Azar, who of course uh, had the best, was hold, the holding the strings for Belgium in hand. And in the end, Azar in the 88th win 3 1. In a game where it seemed like Belgium can, could have made also a few more goals. 3 1, good start for Belgium. Um, I still would say that Russia will get the second spot. Although, you know, I thought Scotland has a chance, I really wanted them, but if you lose 3 0 in Kazakhstan, I'm sorry. It's not going well, but you know, maybe they can pull an upset somehow. So that was yesterday's European qualifiers. I'm not sure how I will do with tomorrow's, but I'll, uh, today's results, I hope I will get a video out on time. Um, I'll do my best on that. We have quite some interesting, I think uh, England against the Czechs is tonight, uh, in the evening, Portugal, Ukraine, I think two really interesting games. Uh, let me know which games you watched and what you thought about all this game. As I said the only full picture I really could give you was from Austria versus Poland. It's a very Austrian perspective. Um, Poland, without being overly convincing, showed that they are a high quality side. And Austria showed their weaknesses that I was afraid that they would have. Despite having a really good start, I think uh, there is promise, but I'm overall a little bit.
anyway give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video let me know about any comments uh, positive or negative that you want to have subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these and I'll talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day